Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie, and if you're new here, hi, welcome. And if you are back, I'm really glad that you're back. So tonight I am hopping on to do a little whip and chat with you guys. And if you are not familiar with what a whip and chat is, um, whip is the letters WIP stands for work in progress and chat. So what that means is that while I'm working on this section, I'll be chatting with you and you can be working on something of your own, whether that's a diamond painting or housework or any other crafty things or coming in and out. I'm just glad that you're here. <laughs> so how are you guys today? Um, I'm going to be working on my giant Josephine wall canvas and this will probably be my last time working on it for a little while and I'll get into why in just a little bit. But let me grab a color and let's get started. So I hope you all had a really wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, we had a very, very chill weekend at home. <laughs> uh, we are pretty conservative as far as when we'll go out and that sort of thing. So um, we just did a, a nice little Thanksgiving meal together at home. Um, and I say we, but really it was just my husband and me that ended up eating most of the Thanksgiving food because my oldest is, um, he has a limited number of things that he will eat. He's autistic. It's just part of, you know, his sort of routine and sensory things. Um, we did get him to try a couple of things, but the second that they touched his tongue, he was like, nope, I don't like that. I don't want it, please. So he was polite about it. Apparently I need more wax. Um, sorry. Uh, before I get too much further, let me go over what I'm using today as well. So I am using, this is Not Your Mama's Mud from the Whimsical Daisies Etsy shop. I'll share the link below in the description if you'd like to go take a look. It is right up there with patty wax, if not slightly above patty wax, as far as being my favorite wax to use in non-everlasting tips, which this is just a regular brass tip. This pen is um, a hybrid pen from Jim's Handmade Pen Shop over on Etsy. I'll link that as well. I really love this one because of the way it's like triple dyed and has the glittery acrylic in the middle. So, okay, let me reload this. And the scent on this one is um, cukes and melons. It smells just like cucumber melon from Bath and Body Works. Anyone else a child of the 90s and remember that so well? <laughs> And then this minder I've been using, one of my favorites right now is, I am not a hoarder, I am a curator of an extensive craft supply collection. I know I'm not the only one, <laughs> especially after this last weekend. So anyway, we had a very chill um, Thanksgiving at home. Uh, my toddler was not even, my two and a half year old was not even super interested in the Thanksgiving food. He is usually our super good eater where he'll eat anything we put in front of him. Literally the only thing he was interested in doing was licking whipped cream off of my husband's fingers. <laughs> he came and like stood behind my husband and uh, a little too much wax and literally just peered over his shoulder and pointed at the whipped cream until my husband just put a little on his finger. Anyway, so um Oh, and I'm sure some of you are noticing and wondering what happened. Yeah. Um, if you follow me on Instagram and happen to watch my stories, um, it will have expired by the time this video goes up. But um, yeah, I cut my hand last night and I'm very grateful that the way that I hold my diamond painting pen is like completely neutral on that particular spot in that cut so it doesn't hurt at all to diamond paint which is it terrible that when it happened the first thing that I thought was not my diamond painting hand yeah and then it was am I gonna need stitches so here's what happened <laughs> so alcohol was involved but not in the way that you would think um, my husband and I stayed up kind of late last night he was working on um uh, one of his film projects, he moonlights as a screenwriter. 
he does have a day job. <laughs> um, so he's working late on one of his projects. And I thought, well, the kids have been pretty chill and letting us sleep in this weekend. I'll stay up really late too. So it's like 1.30. It's one in the morning. And Adam was like, I'll be wrapping up soon. I said, okay, great. Now his one of his chores is he takes care of all the dishes at the end of the night. Just one of the ways that we divide labor in our home. Um, I cook, he cleans the dishes. He does dishes. Um, but I thought I'll be nice. Like I'll take care of the dishes so that when he's done, we can just both go straight up to bed and it's not like, okay, I'm going up and leaving you the dishes, which would have been, he would have been fine with him. But I thought it's fine. Like it'll just take me five or 10 minutes to do. Now, Adam had drank some wine. Um, I had chosen not to because at my ripe old age of mid thirties, <laughs> early thirties, early thirties, 32. Um, currently if I drink all of one glass of wine, I have to drink like four glasses of water so that I don't wake up with a screaming D dehydration headache the next morning. So frankly, most of the time it's just not worth it to me to drink. Like I don't, I don't need to, <laughs> it's fine. Um, and if I do drink, like it's usually just like hard cider or something, um, because that's the one thing that doesn't give me headaches or make me feel nauseous. So anyway, so my husband had had some wine and his wine glass was sitting there and I go to just lightly scrub the inside with a dish sponge. Like I always do when I clean wine glasses, which we don't drink wine very often to be fair. Um, I was not doing anything different about how <laughs> I was cleaning it. I was, there was 0% of alcohol in my system and I was just scrubbing the inside of the dish and all of a sudden, or the glass and all of a sudden just it breaks and yep, big piece went into my hand. So anyway, good news. It's fine. It'll be fine. I just am keeping a butterfly, <laughs> a butterfly bandaid and a regular bandaid over it. I did have a friend ask me when she saw the picture I posted, she was like, did you really use washi tape to, on the bandaid on your hand? And I just laughed and I said, no, it's not washi tape. It's just a particular brand of bandaid from like Target has it. I think Walmart has them. They're called wellies. They come in a really cute metal tin. And I bought one of those because they have really like random and unique sizes and styles of band-aids. I don't know why I'm going like off on a tangent about band-aid styles here. So I'm just going to stop right there. I'll just say, no, this is not washi tape on my hand. This is just an extra layer of band-aid because I didn't want it to um, get like germs and stuff in it, you know? Anyway, <laughs> the good news is it, it's, it'll be fine. It's very tender, especially when I try to pick up my 35, almost 40 pound two and a half year old who likes to be held by his mother quite often. <laughs> so that's a little like that, that hurts a little bit, but <clears throat> anyway, everything's fine. I just, I was cracking up when I mentioned, like I called my mom this morning because she, she just retired um, recently from, am I hearing my child upstairs? Like if you hear that weird sound that sounds like a ghost, it's not a ghost. It's one of my children talking themselves to sleep. Um, so my mom just retired after over 30 years of nursing. And so she has always been like my go-to whenever I have a medical question or I, I call them minor medical issues. <laughs> um, I, she doesn't replace like the doctor for me or anything, but she's like, she's my built-in nurse line. <laughs> I, it just means I don't have to wait on hold. Um, so I had sent her a picture, you know, three o'clock in the morning, my time, by the time we got all situated. And uh, so then she talked to me this morning and she was like, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be okay as, you know, sounds like everything is going to be fine. And then I, she's like, how'd you cut it? And I said, well, I was washing out a wine glass how, and she's like, how much you have to drink? I was like, nothing. <laughs> I, I wasn't drinking. This was not born of inebriation. <laughs> it was, I was 100% stone cold sober. The glass just decided it, it was done. 
I mean, we got them for our wedding over 10 years ago, but I mean, really? <laughs> All right. Oh, there's another one. So anyway, that's my little adventure story from the weekend. Um, so was anyone else both very excited and very much now in jail after the weekend of Black Friday deals? <laughs> um, yeah, I was all excited. I think I said as much in my last whip and chat because it was a couple of days. It was the day before Thanksgiving. Um, and I think I mentioned there, I was like, yeah, you know, I'm glad like I'm actually, I'm safe. Um, like I'm safe from the Diamond Art Club releases, like of the 25 new releases that they're dropping, not literally none of them appeal to me. Um, so this is a great, like I, you know, I'm going to be buying Christmas gifts soon. Like I'm really, I'm not looking to buy kits just for the sake of buying them. I only am buying them if they really speak to me. So I was actually relieved because I thought, okay, well, this means I can keep an eye out for other companies that are having sales. Um, you know, I knew that I was, I was hoping to try Craftably and craft it. And in fact, I did order a kit from Craftably because their sale went live um, earlier on Thursday evening. Um, but yeah, so I, I just happened to be up till midnight anyway, because I'm on the West Coast, which means I was awake at midnight, like the first release of Diamond Art Club kits dropped at midnight, uh, my time. So I was up till then anyway, chatting with people, trying to help them stay awake and all of that. And just checked and was like, okay, no surprises. I wasn't sure if, you know, Diamond Art Club would decide to just drop in some new kits there at midnight just to for fun. So um, then I was up for like another hour, like catching up on some other sales and whatnot. I finally went to bed at like 2 a.m. and woke up at like 8 a.m. my time to just like a barrage of texts and messages from friends being like, Katie, Diamond Art Club just dropped 24, 25, whatever. Like they just dropped a bunch more kits, like out of nowhere. Check, there's Randall Spangler's and Mandy's and all of that. And of course, so I'm like, I'm not worth anything first thing in the morning. Like really, I tell my husband not to speak to me until I've had my breakfast and I'm not I drink some coffee but it, it's mostly I just need to have eaten some breakfast and then I feel like I can have a conversation without biting your head off and I feel coherent um so not a morning person in any way shape or form um anyway so I get all these texts and I'm like what I can't my brain doesn't work like and I have to look and try to decide because the night before several of the kits and that first drop sold out really fast. And so I was like, I have to, I have to decide like really quickly if I want any of these, because if I do, I have to jump on it because if they sell out, I don't know, like with Christmas and COVID, like it could be a while before Diamond Art Club gets them restocked. Not that I have even remotely any shortage of kids to work on right now, but, um, yeah, so I'm like scrolling and I'm like, am I just really tired and disoriented or do like all of these kids speak to me like way more than the first round did? So before I'd even been awake for 10 minutes, I had ordered three kits <laughs> and I don't regret any of them. They were all um, kits I very, very much wanted. I've ordered two of the, the two Randall Spanglers that were in the second round um of releases and oh shoot what was the name of her it's the one that honestly looks like a little bit of a copycat of the stars who listen it's like a girl with her eyes closed and there's stars in her hair and there's like two black cats around her and some swirls behind her so i might actually even post a side by side of those two pieces at some point and be like anyone else see a little similarity here um but i actually 
I held off on the Randall Spangler, which he's the artist that does the cute little dragons or draglings, as I think he calls them. Um, he has artwork with all the cute little dragons. Often there's like cats or books or whatever. Um, and the one that they had in the first round of releases, where it was the one that was sweeping up dust bunnies. And I thought, okay, uh, this is the first Randall Spangler piece I've looked at and been like, no, I, d I don't have to have that. And I don't like, it's really not speaking to me. So I guess I'm not going to get that one. Um, and I made the joke to a couple of people and I don't, I think it might've maybe gone over their head a little bit. Um, I, cause I said, I just, I feel like this dragon has the Pixar mom hips and booty, um, and like thighs. And so if I say that, do you, do you know what I mean? Um, so I, I'm a huge Disney aficionado. And our kids, you know, we have Disney Plus. Our kids watch Disney movies. We love Disney movies and Pixar movies. Um, and there's sort of like an ongoing joke, like in the, you know, various Disney communities and Disney, you know, meme memes that you see going around. Um, that like all of the moms in the Pixar movies have like a lot of junk in the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> like they have got some they've got thick thighs they've thighs for days um they're moms I mean <laughs> but it's just it's almost like comical like how exaggerated they are but it's funny because once you notice it you're like oh my gosh this is the case in all of these movies like the mom in The Incredibles and Andy's mom in Toy Story and 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 <laughs> um where did that come from? Uh, even Nani and Lilo and Stitch. Like, good for you, Disney and Pixar, for showing, like, a variety of body types. But anyway, that's sort of the joke is, like, she's got the Pixar mom hips <laughs> or thighs. Um, voluptuous. So all this to say when that was the very first thing that I thought, no offense whatsoever intended to the lovely artist Randall Spangler or anyone that purchased that kit because it was adorable. Like the books that had like the dust, you know, dust in their titles and stuff. It was so stinking adorable. But all I could see on that dragon is I was like, what is happening with that dragon's haunches? <laughs> so uh, it was... It was a no for me for that one. But the other two that dropped, especially the fireworks one that was like 100, it's 175 centimeters tall. That might go really high on my priority list because that was one of those pieces that when I actually browsed Randall Spangler's website and saw his artwork, when I saw that one, I thought, oh, please tell me Diamond Art Club is going to get this one. I really hope that the large size doesn't scare them away. And then I saw them start doing the really big, like really long or really tall kits, like the minions and stuff. And I thought, ooh, I, I, hope we, I hope that means we can maybe get that Randall Spangler. So when I saw that, I had to have it. <laughs> so um, I also picked up, so let me grab another color because I, as we know, can't do multiple things at once. Um, I ordered, I mentioned earlier that I ordered from Craftably. Um, I had had my eye on, they have a couple of kits from Tanya Shatseva, might be mispronouncing that, that are a little more snack size. And I think they put those kits, they had all of their, like a wholesale section where it was sort of a variety of like up to 60% off on various kits and accessories. And um, Black Hole in the Milky Way was one of them. It was marked, I think, 40%? Mm, 40% off? I can't remember. It was a good price, and I was chatting with my friend Steph, who has the same kit from DIY Moonshop, 
and I thought, oh, well, I'll get that one then. And then we'll do a comparison between the two. Like, I'm very curious to see sort of what the quality and rendering looks like when you put them next to each other. So um, I ordered that. It's already shipped and will hopefully be here um, this week. And I did also order, I could not resist when I saw that Dreamer Designs was doing buy one, get one 85% off. So what I ended up doing with that um, is they have a kit, Rainbow Stallion has been on my like want list from them for months and it just wasn't a priority to me because I thought I'm just, I'm not going to buy only one kit and pay the shipping for it and I don't need it right now, right this second. So I'm not going to like rush for it. I'll just wait. Apparently I was waiting for something like this. So I bought that as well as I wanted to, tr I'd like to try one of their kits in rounds because that was new with, I think their, oops, sorry, November releases is they added round kits. They used to only have square kits and they added round. So I ordered, is it called? Uh, Mary Poppins, Jolly Holiday is the name of it. It's not 100% exactly my style or something I would have reached for but I as I mentioned a little bit ago I'm a huge Disney nut and so I thought oh well this is still like right up my alley and it's a new artist to the company and so it should be you know newer rendering um it just seemed like a good sort of tester piece Again, I'm not totally sure when I'm going to get to that, but we will see. So I also, oh my gosh, you guys, I went a little nuts, but I had been, um, I hadn't really been shopping a ton in the weeks leading up to this week, this past weekend. So it wasn't totally outrageous, but I did also place an order with painting with diamonds uk they do the accessories it's not the diamond painting company and this is a company that i have mentioned previously that i sort of had a really mixed experience with i will link the video down below where i try to share very tactfully and um respectfully but at the same time honestly about what my experience was with them And I debated honestly for like a month or two if I wanted to order from them again because the reality is I love her trays. Her trays are beautiful. I have never seen a company that makes trays in the same colors that she offers. And they had a bit of a learning curve for me, but I was able to get them to work for me. And so I really like her trays. They work really well with just the pen colors. I, I'm, I like to coordinate things. So anyway, so I had messaged her before I placed an order over Black Friday weekend. I had messaged her and I just said, hey, I just wanted to um, check in. And at first I was asking like, are, if I can ask, like, are you planning to have a Black Friday sale or Cyber Monday sale, Small Business Saturday sale? I said, I know it's mostly a, like, U.S. holiday, and I know she's U.K.-based. And I said, and if it's not information you're sharing, that's completely fine. I just thought I'd ask because I was interested in picking up um, a couple more trays. And she responded fairly quickly and said, yes, I will be. It'll, I'll have it go live, you know, I'm going to have it go live on Friday evening, uh, Thursday evening. And I said, okay, great. And I said, can I ask what your current turnaround time looks like just as far as how long you anticipate? I said, it's going to probably be a decent sized order with, you know, a few trays, several trays. Um, and I said, I understand. I was trying to give her, give her like, I was trying not to be a jerk, <laughs> but I said, just out of curiosity, what does your current turnaround time probably look like for something like that? Um, just so I can know whether to expect them you know, before Christmas, of course, understanding that shipping is going to vary with COVID and the holidays and all of that. And she said, uh, right now it's one to two weeks of like processing before they turn around and ship it. So 
she was very responsive um, when I reached out this time. Um, so we will see. <laughs> I am always prepared to give plenty of grace. I just, I hope... <sighs> On, I just, I hope I don't regret it, you know? Uh, it also made me a little bit nervous because when I went to pay, I saw that she no longer had PayPal available as a payment option. And so I, I know that like you can file claims or chargebacks like through your credit card if, you know, you don't get what you ordered, but PayPal was just very easy to do that kind of thing. So I, Again, I, I hope this is not going to come back to bite me. I want to believe the very best in her and hope that that my order will show up in, you know, not in like four months time. <laughs> so we will see. I will keep you guys posted. And I hope that that wasn't too much to share. I just like to I keep you guys up to date <laughs> on what I'm doing. And especially because I... I hesitate to tell you guys like, oh, this, you know, this product is great. Go out and buy from this company. And then if you have a poor experience, you feel like I wasn't totally transparent, you know? So anyway, that was a really long tangent, but I did order some really, really pretty new tray colors. You can tell what that is. Yeah. Okay. So... And then I ordered, like, I ordered some diapers because Honest Company was running a sale and some soap from Bath and Body Works. So um, not all diamond painting related stuff, but a lot of diamond painting related stuff. Um, please share below what you picked up this weekend and or Cyber Monday. Like, this should be going live on Monday morning. It's Sunday night right now. Um, so there's still time. <laughs> I'm so curious to see if Diamond Art Club does anything. For, different for Cyber Monday or just sort of what what it looks like or if it's mostly just going to be for various companies repeats of Black Friday but please share what deals you snagged because I love living vicariously through other people's deal finding <laughs> so oh what else was I going to tell you guys about oh I mentioned earlier this would probably be the last section I work on of this canvas for a little while. Um, the reason for that is that it is almost December and in my brain it's still like October or early November. <laughs> um, yeah, December just kind of, the end of November and everything, it just kind of snuck up on me. And I have two kits in my stash that are really... Christmas specific that I would really like to work on in December. Um, the first is Hope Runs Deep. It is a Chuck Pinson from Diamond Art Club and has, what symbol is that? I know I'm not using a light pad um, because most of these symbols are much easier to see without one. Um, but with my lighting, sometimes I have a hard time making them out very well. Um, so Hope Runs Deep is a Chuck Pinson from Diamond Art Club. It's really, really pretty. And initially I thought, oh, this could just be a winter piece. And then I realized, no, 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 it has like Christmas wreaths and windows and stuff. Um, so I'd really like to work on it in the month of December. And I also have Starry Night Santa, also from Diamond Art Club. That is smaller, but it is a square. Um, and while I'm working on this piece, I'm also working on the kit, uh, my first kit from Treasure Studios Art, Diana, which I am not even quite halfway on yet. So I'm trying to be realistic. I'm not someone that normally likes to have, really, I don't like to have more than one project going at a time, but I knew with this canvas that I was going to want to have another project going for a palette cleanser, which is a good idea by the way. <laughs> um, but I don't, I really don't think that I should literally be rotating through like three different kits at a time, four, three. Uh, so my thought is after I finish this section, a little more of this color. After I finish this section, 
I think I will probably hang this up and sorry, hold on. And sort of just set the all the drills aside. And I think tomorrow I'll go ahead and kit up Hope Runs Deep um, and get started on that one. It is around, so I'm hopeful it'll go relatively quickly, um, but we'll see. The only other Chuck Pinson I worked on was during the Chuck Along in, Chuck Along in September and was Space for Reflection and had quite a bit of confetti and took me a lot longer than I was expecting to complete. So just with that in mind, I thought, let me play it safe and um, let me get started on that one. And if I finish it quicker than I expect to, I can always just come back to this. Like if I finish my Christmas, my two Christmassy kits before Christmas or before the end of December, that's fine. Like I can come back to this and or Diana. I'm not, I am not totally sure if I'm going to continue working on Diana through December. I think, I think it's just going to depend. I think I'm just going to play it by ear, not try to lock myself into anything, which is hard because I'm a planner and I like my structure. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we will see. Um, we'll see how long it takes me. I, I'm not going to finish this during this whip and chat because, I mean, it's confetti crazy. Um, okay. Any more of that symbol? Yeah. So this kit, a couple of quick updates on thought and thoughts on this kit. So if um, I hate to always be that person's like, if you follow me on Instagram, I'm just trying to, you know, for people that follow me both places, letting you know, like, I know this may be repetitive. Um, so today on Instagram, I shared a progress picture of this full canvas. And I even mentioned there, I said, I'm having some very mixed feelings about how this canvas is turning out, but I'm trying not to go too far down that rabbit hole and just sort of trust the process for the moment and just let it come together <laughs> and see uh, before I make any sort of snap judgments. <laughs> so, um, sorry, one sec. And I felt a drill go flying. Oh, there they are. So as I'm sure you can tell very well, this looks like a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> and that's, this is like the sky and there's going to be like a horse. This is going to be like a horse, a Pegasus's legs, Pegasus eyes, legs. Um, let me grab another color. So up close, it looks like just a mishmash of colors, which is fine. Um, it is what it is. But when I pulled back to look at it, um, it just, it's still, the number of colors I think is at a point where it still sort of actually makes the canvas have a blurry effect. It's the kind of canvas that is absolutely designed to be looked at from like a viewing distance of like at least six feet like it's not you aren't supposed to be up close to it at all and the pic so the picture I posted today was from probably three feet away as I was holding my camera up um, above it so if this were hanging on a wall which for whenever I get to a post review whenever I finish and get to a post review of this I'll, I'll do some experiments with it and just like hanging it on a wall and then sort of stepping back and seeing how it looks and all of that. And it's the kind of thing like when I look at the picture and I squint just a tiny bit, all of a sudden it makes sense. But I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it. I don't regret whatsoever working on this canvas. I think it is a fascinating experiment. It's something I've never done before. And I don't know if I'll ever do it again, which is fine. <laughs> and I, I really like that 
I get to share about it with you guys because I haven't seen someone really document working on a kit like this before and I love how you know the questions you guys ask about it and how interested you are in it um so I don't regret working on this canvas at all I'm just a little bit I'm a little bummed <laughs> because my hope was that um it would be like totally confetti crazy but then it would make more sense and look less blurry like the details will look less blurred once you pulled out for you know further back so i don't know i don't know <laughs> i'm just like i said i'm just gonna keep trusting the process because i mean the carousel does we've got like half the carousel done at this point which just head over to my instagram if you want to see my the latest progress i have on this one um i really I think the carousel itself looks really really neat the, the level of color, that's kind of a junky one, okay. Um, the color is really great. Um, and it, it looks very much like the original artwork, which the original artwork has a kind of a watercolor effect, which is probably where the, why it sort of reads as just a little bit blurred. When, it, when it's rendered like this. So we will see, um, to be honest, putting it up for December will probably be a nice little break from it for me. And maybe I'll come back to it even more excited to get back to, ooh, that's not that symbol. A lot of these symbols look, oh, wait, no, 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 okay, it's not. A lot of these symbols are very similar. Here, I'll even show you guys. Okay. I do feel like since I've been working on this for a while, I've gotten used to how the symbols look. So these are the symbols that I just mixed up. Um, a little bit of the tree and then the, you know, female symbol. So just on the canvas, they just, obviously they look similar because they're so <laughs> tiny on the canvas. That's fine. Um, where was I? Oh, I see a couple I missed. So, um, that's what's coming up next and how I'm feeling about the progress on this one so far. Um, if you have been following along with my progress on this one on Instagram, I'd be so curious to hear what your thoughts are about it. You are not going to hurt my feelings if you're like, girlfriend, that... <laughs> That does not look great. <laughs> and to be fair, I did have to um, edit the picture a bit so that this is a really difficult canvas to photograph, both because of its size and because of just the way that the huge variety of colors likes to show up on camera. And anyway, so I had to edit the picture just a little bit and was trying to find a balance between like editing it so the parts looked a little bit more clear, but I still wanted the image to look true to how it actually is. So I don't, I'm not a professional photo editor. <laughs> so I don't think I did like the best job. And so anyway, still, please go take a look and let me know what your thoughts are on it. Um, and I mean, either way, this is going to get finished and I'm, I'm still really enjoying working on it. It's soothing in its own way to have this crazy confetti, believe it or not. Um, okay, I think that's all of that one for now. But that's kind of all I had as far as sort of like chit chat that I could think of, but I had had in the back of my brain for a little while that I thought it would be fun to do one of these, um, like a tag which if you're not familiar with what that is, because I was not even remotely familiar with it until I joined YouTube, started spending more time on YouTube. A tag is just a list of questions um, that people share that you can answer. And I've been going through and like listening to Rachel Ray's older videos because I'm all <laughs> caught up to date on her most recent videos. 
I find her voice to be so relaxing. It's just very soothing to listen to while I diamond paint. So I, yeah, just go back and listen to some of her old videos um, for a good background noise. And had gone way back and found, uh, there was one video where she did a diamond painting tag. And I thought, oh, that would be, that would be fun. I really enjoyed hearing her answer questions specifically about diamond painting and thought, I'll, I'll give that a try. So uh, before I start, like, please let me know if this is your kind of thing, because if you if it's fun for if it's enjoyable <laughs> if it's just so like a relaxing way to listen to me talk because i have been told that i have a relaxing voice soothing voice and relaxing voice to listen to um this could be i guess a relaxing thing to listen to um or if you're like no i find tags to be like really annoying i'd rather hear you just sort of chat about life and whatnot like that's totally fine too you guys know I value um, your your opinions and what you what you like. So anyway, <clears throat> let me take another drink of water and we'll start. I'm not going to get through all of them tonight. There's like 43 on this one, so I'll do a few tonight and then <laughs> we'll see. Maybe next whip and chat I'll do some more. I'll keep maybe mix it up and do some life updates and then some tag questions and go from there. All right, so the first question is, how did you find out about diamond painting? Um, so I found out about diamond painting, I probably heard about it for the first time um, around like a year ago, and it was one of those things that, that was my husband, <laughs> one of those things that came up as like a sponsored post on my Facebook when I was scrolling. And it was one of those videos, probably from like Homecraftology or Paint with Diamonds or one of those companies that was just a, it was just a video of someone diamond painting, like putting drills on a canvas that was super relaxing to watch. And I sort of had the passing thought like, oh, that looks so relaxing. Um, maybe I'll try that sometime. And then kept scrolling because that's that's what you do, right? <laughs> um, that wouldn't be the first time I'd seen something like that on uh, Facebook. And then be like, oh, that'd be fun to try some time. And then never think about it again. Um, and I'm sure I saw that kind of thing a couple of times, but never actually had ordered a kit because I would just forget, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> and then when... Hold on. Sorry to shake you guys there. Uh, when the pandemic started, and at least my family, we locked down a bit. Um, and I was, sorry, let me grab another color. There we go. I was stir crazy by like day three, which by the way, did anyone else feel like the month of March was a million years long and then ever since it's just flown? Um, and one of my favorite kinds of hobbies, um, pre-kids or pre-destructive second child, um, I enjoyed doing puzzles and uh, like putting together like Lego sets, like the big ones. Like we have a giant Disney castle that has since been broken back down <laughs> because obviously um, toddler. Um, but just that sort of uh, soothing kind of motions and things that sort of let you turn your brain off and let you decompress, de-stress. Like that's the kind of thing that I, f I find to be very soothing, especially at the end of my day or, you know, when I'm stressed or anxious. Those are the kinds of things that help me calm my mind. Um... So I was looking for something that would be easy and quick for me to put up and would sort of have a similar function. And for whatever reason, I thought back to, oh, I remember those videos with, you know, look like paint, you know, paint by number or color by number, but with those little stones. That seems very practical because that paint by number is just 
a lot of work to set up and put down. And, you know, if I try to do any of it when the kids are awake, that's just going to be a, a bad idea. Kind of similar with cross stitch, like cross stitch requires a little bit more brain power. I enjoy it. I'd actually like to try it again soon, but it wasn't going to serve the function that I was hoping for. So I do what a lot of people do. And I went on Amazon and thought, what can I get in two days <laughs> with my prime shipping? Found a kit. Naturally, I searched for Disney because totally oblivious to anything about licensing or different company qualities or whatever. So I thought, I'm just going to order something from Amazon, see if I like it. And then, because I know I'll have it in a couple of days, and then, you know, take a look at you know, some other companies or whatever. So my kit came from Amazon and I still remember it was probably like a 20 by 25 or something. It was like Mickey, Sorcerer Mickey. And I worked out of like the little Ziploc baggies that it came with or whatever. And, but really it was just like after a day or two of doing it, I was like, this is it. This is, <laughs> this is what I need for my brain. Um, and then what I tend to do because it's just sort of my <laughs> tendency. Um, I'll mention the Enneagram here again. I haven't brought that up in a while, but I'm an Enneagram type five. So I'm very much a researcher. I like to gather as much information about a subject as I can. So I um, then proceeded to like Google and watch I even that's when I watched a couple of YouTube videos. I don't even remember what creators they were from, but I'm guessing probably Rachel Ray because I always, and Mrs. Crochet Coffee, because I always gravitated towards the videos that had m more views, <laughs> which is funny now that I'm a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel myself. But, you know, I watched some how-to videos and then I'm sure somewhere in there I came across stuff about licensing and, uh... I feel like I ordered one or two more Amazon kits because everywhere else was had really, really long turnaround times because this was in like early April, which was the height of pandemic. And if you've been diamond painting for longer than I have, I'm sure you, or even as long as I have, um, I'm sure you know well like how crazy it was then. It was just because everyone was, is, oh, why did you do that? I'm having problems tonight. There we go. Um, everyone's stuck at home. Everyone's picking up hobbies. It just, everyone's, I'm like, everyone was like me, discovered diamond painting or other crafting hobbies to keep themselves sane. So um, that was when Diamond Art Club had like a handful of kits in stock. <laughs> Um, but I still had managed to get my hands on the giant, um, Anna, the princess from, one of the princesses from Frozen, um, one worth melting for is the name of it. The Mandy Manzano from Diamond Art Club that was a giant banner. So yes, I jumped from the little cheapy snack size kits on Amazon to giant Mandy Manzano princess. <laughs> and the rest is history. And I love it. I'm so glad that I discovered it because it just, it has been a sanity saver during this crazy, crazy times. So uh, the next question is, what was your first diamond painting project? Which, because I'm so long-winded, <laughs> um, I already kind of answered that. <laughs> Literally a little snack size 20 by 25 kit from Amazon that was not licensed. It was a Sorcerer Mickey. I'll, sh I'll bring it out and show it sometime. I still have it in my little portfolio, which is hysterical to me that I saved it. But I save all my projects, so um, let me pick another symbol. Let's do, where's that triangle? <sighs> Pop it there. Um, yeah, like I said, not licensed. I'm sure that the rendering quality was not great, but I enjoyed it. And that's the point, right? Like it was, it was fun to do. And a kit like that, that I feel like I could now do in a couple of evenings. I remember it took me like over a week, <laughs> um, which is fine. Like, again, the point is, do you, do you enjoy it? 
as the, the, serving the purpose that you want it to. Uh, question three, who is your favorite company or website to order from? Um, I have a lot of comp- companies that I have ordered from multiple times. Um, and there are some companies that I haven't had the chance to work on their kits yet. And so if I'm emitting them now, it doesn't mean that they aren't a high quality company at all. It's just, I'm only going to speak from my personal experience. And so please know that and don't take, (laughs) take, you know, take it with that grain of salt. Uh, In my own personal experience, my, does that one have a little, no, okay. My favorite companies to order from are um, Distracted by Diamonds, which is Patty Wax over on Etsy, um, Diamond Art Club, and DIY Moon Shop. Um, I mentioned before that I feel like we all have different things that are top priorities to us with diamond painting. For some of us, it is... um, like for me, uh, my priorities are the rendering, um, the fact that it comes from a licensed artist. Um, I don't want to have to fight my canvas. You know, I want it to, I don't care if the canvas is super soft or anything like that. I just want it to lay flat and not give me issues. <laughs> um, I don't particularly care what comes in toolkits, but there are people that that is a much higher priority for them. Um, there's different things that uh, give value to each of us, and it's up to each of us to decide to weigh all the factors of here are the pros and the cons, and look at what the cost is and all of that, and then we can decide like, okay, yes, this company is worth it to me, or no, this is not. This company is not matching value to me. So anyway, that was kind of a long-winded answer. Those are my current favorite companies to order from, but I am enjoying trying a wide variety of companies. Um, Yeah, so I can test out different ones and discover new ones. Do you prefer clear or opaque covers? Um, I, to me, this is less a question of which cover itself do I prefer and more what does the cover imply and that's what I prefer. Um, Opaque covers, like the one that came on this one originally, it's been replaced with parchment paper, um, usually mean that that canvas is a double-sided adhesive Whereas a clear cover typically, if not always, means that that canvas is poured glue or a higher quality adhesive, like Treasure Studios Art is not poured glue, but has a clear cover and is a much higher quality than a typical double-sided adhesive. Uh, So with that in mind, I prefer the clear cover. I find poured glue to be less finicky um, to work with and... Uh, just more forgiving and easier to work with in general. So, um, question six, how many, oh, no, 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 question five. What is your favorite diamond painting you've done? Hmm, Dawn from Distracted by Diamonds. It was my first, um, it was one of the first kits that was released from their partnership with Geneva Bowers, the artist Geneva Bowers. Um, that kit, I said it at the time and I meant it, which is why I'm bringing, like I didn't even have to really think that hard about my answer, that I loved every second of working on that canvas. The quality on the canvas itself was fantastic. The colors were ridiculously beautiful. The rendering blew me away. Um, I loved every second of it and the image was just ridiculously stunning it was everything that i love about diamond painting um and that was one of working on that kit made me like into distracted by diamonds like one of their biggest 
fans, <laughs> I feel like, because that's, I talk about them a lot, and um, I'm always, you know, sharing, like, if you haven't tried them, like, go try to grab one of their kits, um, which, by the way, I'm already noticing that their new releases that they released starting a couple weeks ago, they have gotten easier to get, gotten easier to get, uh, they're easier to snag, <laughs> Not easy, but they're not gone in half a second. They're gone in like 30 seconds sometimes. Um, yes, that was that was probably my favorite. I also have such a soft spot for um, one worth melting for because it was my first like big like license, like good quality kit that I worked on. You know, that wasn't a cheapie from Amazon. Nothing wrong with Amazon kits. I'm not trying to <laughs> speak down to anyone that likes Amazon kits, but um, I just, uh, just what my brain goes to. <laughs> Please don't take offense. Um, my gosh, the confetti in this section. It's unreal. Um, can you even, is it even making sense yet? No, I think this still is sky. I don't know if this is any of the horse or not. We'll see. Okay, let me grab another color and then I'll answer the next question. Let's do, let's do the diamonds. This is always a fun symbol to get to because um, diamonds, it's like, it's like our mascot, our, our community's symbol. <laughs> okay, question six. How many diamond paintings are in your stash? Look. I did not ask to be victimized by this uh, by this um, tag, but a lot. Let me think, because I was just looking. I track um, I track my kits in the app Gems Flow, which if you have not had the chance to try an app for tracking your diamond paintings and that's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend Gems Flow. It's free. Um, and it's great for tracking like every tiny detail that you could possibly imagine about your diamond paintings. You don't have to track every detail. It's just there as an option if you want to. Um, like my friend Jacqueline tracks everything down to like the date she ordered and the date she received. I'm not calling you out, Jacqueline. I'm just mentioning that like you can track it to that level or you can be like me and I just want to know like, okay, here's what I ordered that's not here yet. And once I've received it, I can mark it as I've received it. Um, and so I think that I currently have, did I break 60 in hand? It's between 55 and 65 in hand. And after this past weekend, I am back in the double digits for ones that I'm waiting on that haven't arrived yet. It is a large stash, and to each their own. I hope that I won't hear <laughs> judgment in the comments. It is just, it's just how I diamond paint. Um, I am planning to de-stash. I have like seven or eight kits that I am planning to de-stash that were ones that I just got a little over eager with. Um, during the pandemic where I was just sort of hopping on whatever came available, um, on the Diamond Art Club website, like anything that even remotely grabbed my interest, I was jumping on because I thought they're never going to have more stock again and I'm going to run out. But now like those paintings, like those would be at the very, very bottom of my priority list because now I have so many that I have spoken to me so much more. So I am planning to de-stash, um, a good chunk of them. If you'd be interested in something like that, please let me know. They'd be like older diamond art clubs, like maybe like Fathoms Below, and um, oh, I can't remember the names of all of them. The one with the that's blue and orange with like the tiger. I think it's a JoJo's art, um, the Milky Way Galaxy, that kind of thing. I'm gonna planning to destash those. So, okay, friends, I've been talking with you for an hour. Um, so we got through a few questions in the tag and some life updates, but I'm going to call it here and let you guys go for the evening. I put a dent in this. I think I'm going to finish this after my goal is going to be to finish it after I finish with you guys. Um, so 
that was a fun, fun different thing to try. I'd love to hear what you guys think of me doing something like this with the tag and feel free to answer the questions yourself. Like I would love to hear like, how many do you have in your stash? <laughs> how did you find out about diamond painting? What was your first project? Those are the kinds of things I'd love hearing about other people because I, I, this is just fun for me. <laughs> so thank you guys for hanging out with me for this whip and chat. It was really great to catch up with you. And um, as always, if this was a fun video for you and you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up for me. Um, and I'll get back to comments as quickly as I can as well. So always leave happy thought or thoughts and uh, that kind of thing in the comments. Um, if you're new here and want to see more from me and get um, notices, no notifications when I do share new videos, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell uh, to be notified when I share updates. Um, and it's not on a schedule because I have little ones and I record when they go to bed. So anyway, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful week and um, stay safe this week and leading into the holidays. Um, and I will talk to you all next time. Have a good night, guys. Bye.